Welcome back to the channel. Welcome back to our FRS BRZ twins build. Well, this is actually part of the BRZ Gen 2 build. So why do we have an FRS on the dyno? Because we're about to baseline this guy and see how it does compared to the BRZ. That's something that um, you know I'm sure interests a lot of you guys. This car has a, uh, a tune or tune on it. It has headers, it has a catback exhaust, and it's running on pump gas. So that's a two liter, and uh, then we've got our, our BRZ sitting right over there, and that's bone stock running on pump gas. So without further ado, let's baseline this guy and then get the new car on the dyno. Two point four strapped on the dyno, so let's see what it can do. We're gonna keep you guys in suspense just for a little bit longer. Uh, to discuss the results because remember when I did the last video showing you the differences between the Gen 1 and Gen 2 we pulled open the airbox and we saw that there's this like secondary mesh filter uh, in the stock airbox and this is the, the stock filter stock paper filter so for comparison's sake and for science let's pull out the stock fil filter and do another dyno pull and see if a filter change is going to gain us any power all right let's get to the results so here is the power curve of the Gen 2 car on our dyno. Uh, you can see that the car made 215 uh, horsepower to the wheels and 177 almost foot-pounds of torque to the wheels. So this is a very strong result given that the car is rated at uh, 228 at the crank and that this is a Mustang dyno, which is, is a, quite a conservative dyno. Let's put that in perspective with the gen 1 car so here you see the the two curves the solid line is the gen 2 car and the dotted line dashed line is a gen 1 car so if we just look at about 3000 rpm here you can see the torque dr difference between the two is is almost 40 foot pounds 175 uh, to 134 so 40 foot pounds uh, to the wheels right at about 3000 rpm and then this carries all the way to the top here where the the torque difference is 142 uh, to 172 so it's it's reduced a little bit to 30 foot pounds but th there's almost 40 wheel horsepower difference between the two cars and they both peak horsepower at uh, just just after 6500 rpm so you can see that the, the Gen 2 car is more powerful everywhere, carrying a, a massive torque advantage. And, uh, and also you note that there is a torque dip. Yeah, that's, that's made its way back. We tuned it out of the, the Gen 1, but uh, looking forward to, to tuning it out of this car as well. So it goes from about 174 foot-pounds of torque to just around the bottom of this uh, trough here to just around let's see come on computer help me out to about 159 so we're looking at about 15 16 foot pounds of torque um a torque dip in that region that i'm sure we'll be able to tune this out uh once we we have the software to tune this uh this gen 2 so there you go a massive difference that that almost looks like uh subaru uh, underrated the the gen 2 in terms of horsepower in terms of how it's comparing to a to a gen 1 and remember that the gen 1 car is not bone stock uh it is with with a full exhaust and a tune and the gen 2 car is stock in terms of both tuning um and uh, and every other hardware component let's put this into another perspective 
and instead of comparing engine speed let's compare time so what this will do is will show us how much longer the gen 1 takes to go through a fourth gear pull compared to the gen 2 so you can see here that the gen 2 ends the pull just after 14 seconds so they all start at the same rpm they stop at the same rpm but it takes 14 seconds for the gen 2 to go through a fourth gear pull and it takes the gen 1 just about 20 seconds so it takes the gen 1 six seconds longer to accelerate through fourth gear and they both have the same four to one for 4.1 rather to one uh, final drive ratio so that gives you a real world perspective of how much stronger the uh, the gen 2 car pulls and before we we move on i know we did that that little comparison here um between the air filter and no air filter so i'll pop that in and uh, you can you can be the judge of whether or not an air filter makes a difference in terms of power on this car and here are the results so there is the difference there's the measurable difference between the two and we're talking about about three horsepower three to four horsepower and just a little bit across the board but really three to four horsepower is the is the biggest difference at peak peak horsepower and uh, that's with us pulling the OEM filter out and just leaving that mesh into place uh, the one thing that it does do it does add some induction noise so if you love that induction noise then go ahead and, and get a higher flowing air filter but in terms of power you can see the two power bands are very very similar and just a little bit to be gained at the very top end now doing comparisons like this is is useful at, at putting performance uh relative performance into perspective so let's have a look at a couple more comparisons here is the gen 2 the solid line the 2.4 liter the solid uh the solid power line compared to a turbocharged gen 1 car so the turbocharged car is a 2 liter it's running about 12 to 14 psi sorry 12 to 13 psi of boost on uh on a 2860 turbo and this is again on our pump gas it's it's not a very friendly gas in terms of knock resistance and you can tell that the gen 1 car the dotted line made more power everywhere but only just so it picked up uh it picked up about 15 horsepower at the at the very top end but that's that's a kind of power difference that i expect we'll just be able to make up for on the gen 2 engine or the 2.4 engine with tuning alone so I'm very excited to to get going on the on the tune development because I think there's a lot of potential here and it can make it for a very quick car. It's already quick, but it could it could be even quicker. Here's another comparison. So this the dotted in this case the dotted power is a Ford Fiesta ST. So it's a 1.6 liter direct injected turbo. And the reason I bring this up is is because you see that the peak power between the two cars is quite similar but the the gap in torque between the turbocharged engine and the naturally aspirated engine is quite large of course that that um, turbocharged engine is going to give you a, a nice kick uh, a big shove but uh, because of the oem turbo um, and this is of course a tuned car uh, because of the oem turbo uh, not being too large and it falls off towards the top end and the two power lines converge uh, here's another interesting comparison so this is a miata this is an nc miata so it's got a two liter duratec and you can see how much more powerful the 2.4 liter is versus the two liter uh, duratec in the miata and finally another naturally aspirated engine in this case the dotted line is a uh, three liter air-cooled porsche engine so obviously a totally different generation a totally different uh, different vehicle but it's got uh, individual throttle bodies it's been rebuilt uh, we tuned this on on the same pump gas uh, and you can see that that it is making more torque and power in this region but the top end of the 2.4 uh, is actually better and we're able to rev out the newer motor the newer 2.4 uh, a lot higher so 
that's that's uh, gives you guys uh, some insight onto how this car performs compared to not only the Gen One but a lot of uh, a lot of other different cars uh, that uh, you might see out there in terms of turbos and natural aspiration. I want to take this data analysis one step further, and we data logged using a, a more primitive data logging device. Uh, on this side, what the Gen 2 was doing during the pull, and this is uh, the Accutech log of the of the Gen 1 uh, that we've tuned. So I wanted to highlight some things. First of all, on the on the Gen 1, let's have a look at the peak airflow. So this is this number that's 142 grams per second there, and that's near the top of the rev range. So that's peak airflow on the 2 liter engine. And if we jump over to the 2.4 liter engine and you look at peak airflow we're looking at 172 grams per second so right here you can see that 20 percent difference that we're seeing on the dyno in terms of power it's also there in terms of airflow i'm not convinced that the difference in airflow and therefore power is strictly based on displacement alone i have a feeling that this gen 2 engine is actually better flowing as well so that's something that we'll be digging into and and looking further into but these numbers these airflow numbers corroborate positively with the power difference between the two cars a couple of other interesting uh interesting things about the um the gen 2 is that you can see the air fuel ratios that are targeted and they're just they're just a little bit a touch rich from peak power so 12.3, which is the car is running relatively lean, doesn't seem to be knocking on our pump gas, which is which is nice. And lean, I don't mean um, I don't mean in a dangerous way, but I mean that it is uh, it, it is running, um, you know, almost peak power AFRs without seeming to uh, to run into any sort of knock issues, just dropping off of that in the very top end, and then timing. So the, the timing is, it is running, it's actually running less timing than we're able to run on the Gen 1. Again, pointing to the potential of tuning. And here at the top end, it also drops some timing. This is a very similar timing uh, curve to what we see on the, on the Gen 1. So I'm looking forward uh, to really getting, uh, digging into, into tuning the Gen 2 a little bit more once the software is available. And of course, we'll we'll show you guys all that and uh, and offer tunes for these cars. the The power potential is there, and I'm very excited to um, to dig more into this. So keep following uh, this build and keep following us, stratifiedauto.com, and we'll see you guys on the next one.